The Lucas CAV Spring Starter is totally self-contained. It doesn't need batteries, air reservoirs, or other remote power storage systems to drive it. It's comparable to a five horsepower electric starter, and it's ideally suitable for engines with two to six cylinders of up to one and a quarter liters per cylinder. Although it weighs less than a quarter of a conventional electrical starting system and saves a similar volume of space, it can crank an engine three times faster. For diesel engines, that means less compression and heat loss and therefore more reliable starting, even in cold weather. It has a virtually inexhaustible energy supply and due to its simple design, coupled with precision manufacture, is durable and reliable. Servicing is simplicity itself, requiring limited training and simple tools. This makes the spring starter the ideal unit for remote, totally dependable engine starting. It works on the principle of using the energy stored in a spring pack to rotate a shaft, which in turn rotates the engine flywheel. To explain how this is done, let's first look at a simple nut and bolt. If the bolt is prevented from rotating when the nut is turned, the nut moves along the bolt. This principle is used to wind or load the starter. If on the other hand, the nut is prevented from rotating and is pushed along the thread, the bolt will rotate. This principle is used to transmit the potential energy stored in the spring to the pinion. In the starter, the bolt is replaced by a threaded main shaft and the nut by a ball nut. To reduce friction, 16 ball bearings are fitted between the nut and thread on the shaft. The four lugs on the ball nut engage in slots machined in a sleeve that carries a bevel gear. So that if the sleeve rotates, so does the nut. 24 chrome vanadium disc springs are mounted in opposed pairs on the sleeve. They're clamped between the bevel gear at one end and a ring that's located by the four ball nut lugs at the other. Clearly, when the sleeve is rotated and the shaft held, the nut rides up the thread and the springs are compressed. If the situation is reversed, the springs push the ball nut down the locked spring sleeve and the main shaft is forced to rotate. The sleeve can be turned by a bevel pinion mounted on a winding shaft. A ratchet with twin poles prevents the winding handle flying back when the springs are loaded. The main pinion is mounted on the end of the main shaft and is driven through ball bearings on a five-start thread. The bearings also locate a ratchet ring which engages with the main control pole. This can be connected to either a trip lever or the cable of a remote tripping device. To charge the starter, the trip button is pressed to engage the main pole and prevent the pinion from turning. A 209 mm long winding handle is used to turn the spring sleeve via the bevel gears. Although the spring exerts a force of up to 40 kilogram newtons, the maximum handle torque is only 60 newton meters. So even a small boy is capable of winding the unit. Initially, there's nothing to prevent the main shaft from rotating. So the whole spring pack and shaft rotates, except for the pinion assembly, which is held by the paw. The effect of this is to wind the pinion up the five start thread so that it moves forward into mesh with the flywheel. This, of course, means that the starter is a pre-engaged type and at the speeds involved is incapable of creating sparks or ring gear damage. If tooth-to-tooth -tooth abutment should occur, a spring-loaded link arrangement allows the pinion to slightly rotate. Once fully forward, the pinion is locked by the pawl, which also stops the shaft rotating. The ball nut is then forced to travel up the main shaft threads and compress the springs. Different coloured springs can be seen through inspection windows to indicate the state of charge. In practice, 
Two turns of the winding handle are needed to engage the pinion in the flywheel and a further 10 turns to fully load the machine. When wound, the spring's energy is restrained between the ratchets of the winding mechanism and the trip device. When the trip pawl is lifted, either by a lever or via a cable and remote control, the pinion and shaft are free to rotate. The springs then force the ball nut along the stationary sleeve, rotating the shaft and pinion, and therefore the engine. A fully charged starter provides full cranking power for 80 milliseconds, which is usually equivalent to a third of a flywheel rev. That's enough to accelerate a typical engine to 450 revs per minute. The inertia created in the engine is usually enough to ensure that it continues to turn for two more complete revolutions, by which time the combustion process takes over. A catch arrangement ensures the main pawl is held up, while the pinion is ejected back up the five-star thread, assisted by a return spring. The winding shaft ratchet has a self-tensioning clutch. This allows the spring starter to be simply and easily unwound should it ever be found necessary. An additional benefit provided by this starter is the ability to use the winding handle to slowly rotate the engine. This can be really helpful when making engine service adjustments. In this case, the trip lever is operated after the first two turns of the winding handle. At this point, the pinion has moved into mesh, but the springs have not been loaded. The engine can then be rotated by continuing to turn the handle. When finished, the pinion is withdrawn simply by winding the handle in reverse. The spring starter weighs less than 17 kilos. That's far less than the total weight of other electrical, air and hydraulic systems, which can easily exceed 45 kilograms.